So not gonna lie, it's been really hard working on this skirt. My fingers are so cold in my studio. The furnace is broken and I literally sometimes have to sit in front of a space heater just to warm up my fingers enough to get anything done. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how I, as an experienced sewer of many years now, have actually just completed my first real cosplay, if you will, of an outfit from a historical movie. Actually, a historical show. And this is one of my favorite shows recently. It's All Creatures Great and Small. It's based on James Harriet's memoirs. He was a country vet in Yorkshire. And so on this show, his fiance and then wife, Helen, wears this particular pink skirt and it is just gorgeous. I really was attracted to it right from the beginning. Actually, I'm attracted to all of her clothing because it's just really nice. And also her body shape is fairly similar to mine. So I've been taking notes whenever I wash it. And there was this one pink skirt that she wears at a couple iconic moments in the show. The first time is when James proposes to her and the next is when they've just come back from their honeymoon. And it is a very interesting skirt because in the top view, it kind of has this pencil shape sort of look. It has the darts that a pencil skirt would have. It has the fitted shape that a pencil skirt would have. But then in the few instances when you see a more zoomed out shot of her, it actually has more of an A-line flared out shape. And it also has these really cool front pockets and this really interesting front and back slit that sort of opens out and has more fabric behind it. And I looked at this as a very interesting challenge for me, not only as a sewer, but as a pattern maker, as to how I could bring this skirt to life with all of its seeming contradictions. So that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to take you along for the entire process of making this skirt. I learned a lot, not only about the patterning and the research of this time period of skirt, but also I learned more like tailoring techniques and how to really up level my sewing both by using high quality materials as well as by using actual tailoring techniques with this skirt as I was making it. So let's talk a little bit about the research and the patterning for this skirt. So of course the first thing I did was I sat down in front of the show and I you know fast forwarded to all the parts where this skirt appears and I would pause it at various frames and and really take take looks at it and take notes. So this skirt as I said it was very contradictory because it had the darts in the front and the back that a pencil skirt would normally have. It had two front darts and four back darts. And normally you don't see that amount of darts, which cause a lot of like waist and hip shaping unless it's on a fully fitted pencil skirt. But this skirt flared out more at the bottom. Everything I've learned about patterning says that you don't use that many darts on an A-line skirt. In fact, you pretty much only will have two darts in the back and none in the front. And I did research on 1930s skirts as well as 1940s skirts. The 1930s skirts, again, they would only use the darts if they were fitted straight pencil skirts. There actually weren't a lot of flared out skirts in fashion in the 1930s, but when we get into the early 40s, that is when the A-line skirts come in and the skirts are getting a little more flared. And again, they're not using the same amount of darts as were in Helen's skirt on the show. So I came to the conclusion that the costume designers had A, decided to put Helen in a more 1940s style skirt, even though this is now the late 30s that the show is happening. They just wanted her to look a little more like fashionable, I guess. But they also did a little trickery, in my opinion. They wanted to make the skirt look like a pencil skirt on her, especially since in movie making, of course, you're often only seeing like the upper part of a person's outfit. It. And so the darts gave it the look of a pencil skirt, gave it the fitting of a pencil skirt, while at the bottom it was more flared. I'm assuming they did this because they felt that it would suit the actress's individual figure better. So that was interesting. So I decided to do my best. I followed my pattern making book and I did have darts in the back, but I did not have any darts in the front because I didn't want to go to the work of creating like fake darts, which is in my opinion what they must have been on the show. So that's what I did. So I went ahead and patterned the skirt to the best of my ability. I made a couple mock-ups and I was really happy with it. This was my first time actually making a skirt with this amount of fitting, even though it is still a slightly flared skirt. The skirts I've made in the past have tended to have a lot more volume than this. And I was pleasantly surprised at how I looked and felt in this skirt. So after making the mock-up, it was time to jump into sewing this skirt. So let's jump into it. 
Okay, I'm here in my studio. I'm just working on my skirt. I also have a pair of shoes, well actually a shoe pattern that I'd like to get some work on. And I'd like to get some work on creating my whole organizational setup, which you can see is sort of stacked behind me. We'll see how much of that I get done. I do have a little woman here with me. Before we jump in to the main body of this video of making my tailored wool skirt inspired by all creatures great and small, I'd like to talk to you a bit about my learning process for how I even learned to make clothing like this. And frankly, it was through a lot of time and struggle. And that's why I love online learning platforms like Skillshare. Skillshare has countless different video classes on basically infinite amount of topics. Whatever you wanna learn, chances are Skillshare has a class on it. So I'm currently taking a class on Skillshare called Filmmaking for All, Tell Your Story Through Video. And I'm learning so many insights about just how to distill the process down of how to reliably be able to create engaging stories through my videos. Not sure where to start? Skillshare has designed something called Learning Paths which is designed to take you from novice to pro in basically no time. You'll enjoy unlimited access to all of the learning opportunities on the entire Skillshare platform, all in a enjoyable, easy to use and ad free way. Are you ready to dive in? The first 500 people to use my link will receive their first month of Skillshare for free. This is a great opportunity for you to sign up and I highly recommend it. Skillshare is an invaluable resource for learning and achieving your dreams. Skillshare is more than just a platform. It's a thriving and diverse community of online creatives, dreamers, and doers. Whatever you're passionate about, they have a class for you. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Skillshare. One of the hardest parts about sewing, especially when you don't live near any physical fabric stores, is simply finding the correct fabric for your project. After I decided on the design of this skirt and what I wanted it to look like roughly, then it was time to find a fabric, and after much searching I decided on this sturdy wool twill fabric that is one of the higher end fabrics that I have ever bought. It was made in England and it was definitely worth it. This was a beautiful fabric to work with for a tailoring project like this. So now that I had my pattern and I had made a couple mock-ups to make sure the skirt fit properly, I cut out my pattern and I did take a slower approach with some of these pattern pieces, not all of them because I did get tired of it, but that slower approach was that of using tailor's tacks, which is essentially where you use big basting stitches to mark your sewing lines all the way through to all the layers of fabric that you're cutting out. And it is a very accurate way to mark your pattern pieces. So I just wanna give a shout out to this wonderful tailoring book that I recently got, Vintage Couture Tailoring. It taught me a lot of new techniques and definitely gave me that extra motivation to take a slower approach to sewing this skirt, which I must admit, since having my last baby, I have been taking more of a fast approach to sewing in my projects prior to this. And it shows those garments now that I've been using them for a few months, they are just not holding up very well, not looking as nice as the projects that I made even years ago, but took a slower approach to make. So I am feeling re-inspired to use slower techniques for this skirt. So for the lining fabric, I use this beautiful rayon viscose lining from Riverside Fabrics. Riverside Fabrics is a wonderful source of dead stock designer fabrics, which means that you can affordably source very high quality, usually natural fiber fabrics like silk and linen. And I highly recommend this site if you're looking for a new online store to buy your fabric from. They have fast, affordable shipping and lots of options for beautiful garment sewing. And I just wanted to thank Riverside Fabrics for supplying me with this lovely lining fabric that I used for this skirt. This fabric was a joy to work with. Usually lining fabrics can be difficult and very slippery and finicky to work with. This was not the case with this one. So the next step was cutting out my lining pattern. So I did use a separate pattern for the lining of the skirt. This pattern does not have darts and it leaves room for the facing on the top of the skirt, which was made out of a matching wool. Now, later on, there were going to be some issues with the wool facing for this skirt, but we'll talk about that later. So I'm heading to my studio. 
I have a bunch of things to work on. It's going to be a busy couple of weeks. We are heading on a trip, Paul and I and the baby, to go back to Windsor to visit some friends. Windsor is where we moved from. If you didn't know, in the summer we moved here. So that means I have a couple busy weeks of video production. So I'm on my way to the studio. I'm hoping to spend the morning just powering through some video editing projects and then I can spend the afternoon hopefully getting to my Helen skirt because I'd also like to finish that before our trip because if you like to sew, you know that it can be nice to sew something new for yourself before you go on a trip. So one of the first steps in beginning to sew this skirt is sewing the darts. And the way that I like to sew my darts that I learned through a lot of trial and error is by first hand basting them together by using these ladder stitches along both legs of the dart. And then you pull up on threads and pull that dart together before machine stitching it. Darts are a great way to add curving to a garment that's going to be fitted over the curved areas of our bodies. And this is So when I'm pressing this dart, normally I would use something called a tailor's ham, but I'm in my studio today and I don't have access to my tailor's ham. It's at my house in my sewing area, so I am actually just pressing this over my dress form. That was a challenge that definitely came up during this project was just the backing and forthing between my house sewing area and the studio sewing area given that my studio is about an, a kilometer away from my house. I can drive there but usually I prefer to walk and that's what I've been doing. It just makes this more of an adventure which has its pros and its cons of course. Hi everybody, so I'm out of breath. I've just been walking to my studio. It's another day. Never a dull moment. The furnace in the studio appears to have stopped working, so we have to get that fixed. It's cold in there, I have to wear my coat. And this is my second time going to the studio. The first time was the morning, and I brought my daughter with me, but she was fussy, and then she needed a diaper change, and I had thought I had diapers there, and I didn't. My dad and my brother were there also trying to film a video of theirs to do with some woodworking equipment that they've gotten for the studio. Anyway, so I had to leave, and we've had lunch, and now my daughter is sleeping. And so I'm able to come here by myself, hopefully get some work done on my skirt because I'd like to get it done in time for our trip. So one of the cool aspects of this skirt is the center gore details. So that's what gives this skirt its really interesting look apart from the pockets is that it has this basically slit at the center front and the center back that opens up at the bottom and there's extra fabric underneath in the form of a gore. So I just went in to press the center front and center back seams of my skirt where the gore is going to be stitched in and realized that I did not leave a side opening for the zipper. So I'm going to go in with my seam ripper and open up an opening long enough for my zipper. It's funny, I remember to leave that on the lining and not on the actual skirt itself, so that's funny. We all make mistakes. <laughs> so my kids have all arrived here as you can see during their homeschooling yeah. lesson. Noah. Shh. And as you can already see, I did do the top stitching along the center front and center back seams. I probably actually should have done that after the gores were pinned in place because I've been contemplating the difficulty of getting this center gore to sit flat. But oh well, it's nothing a little hand stitching can't fix. Also beginning to work on those pockets. This was challenging for me because I've actually done very little sewing of patch pockets like this. A patch pocket is simply a pocket that is a rectangle fabric sewn on top of a garment rather than built into a seam. And these ones of course have these flaps, which is important to get the corners nice and cleanly pressed. And I went down an entire rabbit trail around this time of researching extra tailoring tools that I want to have on hand that would make this job easier, like a tailor's clapper and a point presser, which is simply a wooden tool to help you make crisp seams and crisp edges in your garments when you're pressing them with your iron. So that will definitely be included in the next sort of project of this type. Yeah, so again, a lot of this sewing of this skirt was done in a very peaceful and quiet environment a kilometer away from my home, which was challenging, frankly, sometimes because I'm used to sewing everything 
in my own house, which makes it very convenient to just go back and forth working on a project and then doing something else around the home or with my kids. But this meant that I had to be very structured with my time, deciding, okay, I'm going to walk to my studio now, doing, making the extra effort, putting on my coat, walking all the way there, carrying anything I needed with me, working on it for a while, and then coming home in time to take care of the baby because I usually did aim to leave the baby with my husband during that time which again has its pros and cons. Generally, I do like to keep my baby with me when I'm sewing, but she's at an age where she's getting into everything and it can be hard to get things done like that. Thankfully, my husband does work from home, which makes it a possibility for him to watch the kids for me to go to the studio. <sighs> okay, so I have all these boxes around because I'm setting up my new storage system called OobCube, and I'm sure you might be hearing about that sometime soon when it's all set up. Excuse the mess anyways. Another challenge that has been coming up for me recently is this Black Singer sewing machine that you see me using. So I have only just gotten it to be working for me smoothly after actually years of owning it and not being able to get it to work. And frankly, having given up on ever getting it to work for me. It's from the 1940s and I learned from my good friend Meg that it is actually like one of the best vintage machines that Singer ever made. <laughs> And I had it for like a couple years and it never worked for me for a while. But since learning about that, it really lit a fire under me to get it working. And it is mostly working. I don't know what happened, something magical perhaps, but it is now working for me even better than my green machine. It's very smooth, very easy to use and very efficient. So now along this process, it was time to start working on the facing. And this is where I had some issues because I had thought that a nice wide curved facing would be a good idea. Now, if you don't know, a facing is basically an interior layer of fabric that is sewn right sides together to an outer edge of a garment, like a neckline, or in this case, the skirt waistline. And it's simply a way of finishing off that edge in a clean way without having to use a waistband in this case and while also helping to add some structure to the waistband on the inside. So I thought it would be nice to have a nice thick facing that went down fairly low into the skirt and had a curved bottom edge but it turned out that just wasn't working. I just hadn't paid enough attention during the patterning phase and I did not include this in my mock-up so it just wasn't working and I had to do a lot of finicking things with this on my dress form to get it to sit properly. I figured out the facing and the lining situation. It's a little bit of a semi-disaster, but it's not that important because it is just the lining. So I've been absolutely loving this iron that I was using for this process, this gravity-fed steam iron. It has really up-leveled my sewing, but that also was complicated by the fact that the furnace in our studio had stopped working. So it meant that we had to bring in these big industrial space heaters that we were essentially leaving on all the time because if we didn't, the water in my iron would have frozen and broken the iron <laughs> because it is that cold here in Northern Ontario, Canada. And that put the electric bill up pretty high. <laughs> All worth it, but yeah, just lots of complications that came up during this process. It is very cold in here and surprisingly hard to work when I'm wearing a big parka. But I am currently working on the facing for this. So I thought about it and I decided it's best if I just go ahead and press under the bottom edge. So that way I can just go ahead and stitch it directly onto the lining and then I can just cut away the lining that will be underneath. I was pinning on like the front and back gores, which go in the center back and center front. And then I realized I should sew the actual center seam all the way down to where the slit opens up. So I went ahead and did that too. And it's coming along. Okay, so I roughly figured out the facing and I ended up having to do bit of sloppy work in this area. The facing and the lining just didn't completely line up the way they were supposed to, but it's just on the inside of the skirt, so I just let that slide. It's totally fine. Now that that part is done, it's time to work on the fun part, which is pinning the pockets and the pocket flaps in place 
where they will look best. So I did indicate on my original pattern where I wanted them to sit with Taylor's tacks, but it still required a lot of experimentation to actually pin them on and deciding if that was really how I wanted them to go. So in Helen's original skirt, the pockets sat completely perpendicular to the vertical lines of the skirt. So just a normal straight pocket, but I thought it would be nice to have a bit of a slanted line brought in, like a V shape brought in. So I slightly angled these pockets downward. What I loved about working with this fabric is that normally a project like this that has lots of fairly prominent top stitching details, like the top stitching that held the pockets on and the top stitching on either of these center seams that held the gores in place. Normally that stitching would be very prominent and therefore if you made any sort of mistakes or wobbles as you were sewing, it would be very visible. But this wool twill fabric is a great beginner fabric for tailoring because it is so thick and textured that it basically just absorbs your stitches. So they basically look nice no matter what. Okay, it's about one o'clock. It's time for me to go home and have lunch with the family. I'm just itching to get this skirt done because tomorrow I'm gonna to be filming a video and then I'm gonna be working on producing that. So I would like to get as much as I can done with the skirt today. So I'm bringing the skirt and the zipper and the lining home and maybe I'll get some basting done at home next. We have a whole bag of clothes that we need to donate in the back of the van. Okay, so I'm here in my little sewing space in my walk-in closet at home. If my baby's napping, you might hear the white noise in the background, but I'm just going to be pinning and basting the zipper into the main body of the skirt and stitching that in. And then afterwards, I will be able to stitch the lining to this. So now that the pockets are sewn on, one of the final steps is going to be sewing the hem on the skirt. So I decided to put this on my dress form and eyeball it and then press a crease where I wanted the fabric to fold up. Then I simply hand stitched it down with a herringbone stitch. Normally with a hem on an unlined skirt, I would fold it up twice so the raw edge is not visible, but in this case, it doesn't really matter and this fabric isn't going to fray much at all anyways. Okay, so I have the waistline edge of this skirt finished, as you can see, and I'm very happy with how it is turning out. It's time to now stitch down the edge of the facing that lines up with the zipper to the zipper. I'm going to use hand stitches for that. So the final step for this skirt was making some fabric covered buttons. There's just something about fabric covered buttons that always intimidates me. I've only done it a few times and for some reason I've always found it extremely difficult and all the videos I've ever watched of other people demonstrating it make it seem like it's so easy and for me it has never been easy. But I did discover a trick that came about during this process because I was literally freezing my fingers trying to create these fabric covered buttons in the button mold. It's quite finicky work and my fingers were so cold in my fairly unheated studio that they just couldn't work properly. <laughs> so I ended up moving in front of one of my space heaters that was running, which warmed up my fingers, but it also helped soften up the button mold, the plastic or silicone button mold that I was using to create the fabric covered buttons. Okay, everyone, this skirt is finished. I really hope you enjoyed coming along for this journey of making it. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. How do I like this skirt? I really, really love it. I have fallen in love with this shape of more fitted vintage skirt 
And I've also fallen in love with vintage tailoring, this high quality type of like wool twills and wool tweeds, like what I used for the skirt. It was just so easy to work with, so easy to steam into certain shapes. And I can really see why so many vintage clothes were made with wool fabric. They're just, it's just so such a joy to work with. I learned a lot of techniques with this skirt project that I really plan on taking further and expanding more in future projects. And thanks so much for joining me on this journey and I'll see you on my next video.